Hey guys, Chastity and Greg here with Hello. another breakdown for Star Trek Discovery, this time with Season 2, Episode 13, Such Sweet Sorrow. Again, warning, spoiler alert, if you haven't seen the episode yet, get out of here, go watch it, and then come on back. This episode is titled Such Sweet Sorrow. Yeah, and it's a quote from Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet in which the full quote reads, Parting is such sweet sorrow that I shall say goodnight till it be morrow. And yes, that is the 90s classic you saw right there, Romeo and Juliet by Baz Luhrmann, starring John Logazamo. Anyone else in that movie? Just John Logazamo. Wait. No. Turn the Vimvoli on. Leguizamo aside, so let's talk about this episode. So, Such Sweet Sorrow, we're talking about saying goodbye. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of saying goodbye in this episode, mm -hmm. and I almost cried about four or five times. Oh, towards the end, yeah. yeah. Just all of the goodbyes. Oh. Yeah, just like started to sniffle a little bit with Sarah and Amanda, and then uh, when she was saying goodbye to Ash, and then I really got emotional when Pike started saying goodbye to everyone. I got emotional <laughs> when I saw the Enterprise ship. I've been waiting for this episode for so long, and the idea that they may actually just go off into the future, voyage out somewhere. You've been saying this. I've, You've been saying they should go to the future. I, I, now, the fact that they did it makes me wonder if they're just gonna rip it away from me last second. I, 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 this setup made me feel like, oh no, yeah. something's up here. Right. Just the, the idea that you know Spock's with them, obviously he's not gonna be with them at the not. end of this. So tells there are little holes here that tell me that something, it's not gonna go the way we think. And every episode so far has always led us down this path of something bad might happen to a character, and mm -hmm. then last second it turns it on its side and uh, we're brought back to you know where we started, our anchor point, I yeah. guess. And we have these future visions to go off on, yeah. so we know that something's going down. Leland's uh -huh. getting on that ship. Yeah. Reno saw it too, so we know it's confirmed that mm -hmm. like they haven't changed the future. They can't change the future. Nope. So this doesn't work? I think some of that works. Okay. <laughs> some of it's going to happen, but I, I just hope it sticks. I really want them to stick with this. I hope they go off into the future for the next season. Mm -hmm. I, I hope it stays that way, but I have a feeling they may just you know, tweak it. We start with a new crew now that, you know, doesn't know everything about, you know, Michael and Spock. Who knows where they're gonna go with this. I, I hope it sticks. All right, let's jump into the recap and talk about the important points of this episode. Let's start with Sarek. So Sarek is sitting on the beach and he seems to be concentrating and is concerned about Michael. Then the Discovery crew packs their belongings as they prepare to abandon ship in order to destroy it. The USS Enterprise is there to help them evacuate. Now Control is gaining on them quickly and infiltrated their subspace radio relay so the Discovery crew can't reach Starfleet for help. Then Burnham grabs the time crystal and sees a vision of Control attacking their crew. Goodbye. So this matches up with what Reno saw as well later on in the episode. So what did you think of the visions? All I could think of, and I know I'm not the only one here, I just immediately thought of Galaxy Quest. <laughs> the second Leland starts unloading on everyone with his phaser, I immediately thought, okay, th there's no way, one, this is probably going to happen, but you have that MacGuffin of the, just the time crystal on your ship, just like in Galaxy Quest. So I kept thinking, are they just gonna reverse time by five <laughs> minutes or something? The one thing they'd highlight over and over again is that large piercing pro that enters the ship, mm -hmm. so we'll keep an eye on that for the next episode. Goodbye. Next, Saru and Pike activate remote auto-destruct on Discovery, then joined by Burnham, they enter the bridge on the Enterprise. Number one welcomes Pike home. So this was the big glamour shot. What did you think of the bridge? I absolutely loved it. I'll talk about it in detail in the Easter eggs in a minute. I can point out all the things that they kept from the original and how they modernized it. Uh, it's really, really cool. It's gorgeous. Number one tells Pike that the Enterprise will have no more holographic communications, ever. Afterwards, Giorgio meets up with the crew on the bridge of the Enterprise. Then the auto-destruct on Discovery fails, to no surprise, and then when they fire on the ship, the shields are raised. The spear data has merged with Discovery and is protecting itself. So we saw this coming from a mile away. They're not yes. going to be able to destroy the ship, and I mean, it is Star Trek Discovery. The ship's going to stay intact, mm -hmm. it, whether they go in the future or stay, well, but yeah. yeah. The short trek also, Calypso, tells us that the ship's going to be fine, or at least it's going to be, again, voyaged off where everyone has to leave that ship at some point in the future anyways. Mm -hmm. So it, we know it's not going to be destroyed because it looks like they're going all in on their short trek episodes, except for the Harry Mudd one. I don't know how that's going to show up later on. So if you haven't watched those yet, go watch those before the season finale. The crew can neither delete the data nor destroy Discovery and are running out of time. Burnham believes they have the time crystal to take the data out of this time so Control can never get it. She realizes Discovery has to go to the future. Discovery has to go to the future. 
So the plan is to rebuild the time suit, this time with Michael wearing it, and yep. then they come to the conclusion that the red signals aren't from Michael's mom, but from Michael herself. There you go. They may have someone else in there, who knows yet. Uh, it's gonna be Michael, hopefully in the suit. She's gonna go back and forth and put out the rest of those signals. Then a fifth signal appears as Leland approaches. Essential personnel return to Discovery so they can jump to the new signal with Enterprise to follow. The signal brings the crew to Zahia. And Tilly's like, oh yes, I know this place. My friend Poe's from there, and Poe happens to be the Queen Zahia. Your Highness, may honey ika halika po. Wow, you're good. Poe will make them a supernova by modifying a dilithium incubator by combining it with dark energy. The crew figures out that the plan is a one-way trip to the future. Burnham says goodbye to the crew and tells them she loves them. So this is part one of the many goodbyes. Yes, uh, the one that got me the most, I, I have to say, was Ash. Just the, his... <laughs> Yeah, and her, her running back and just like passionately <laughs> embracing him and giving him a kiss. That was that he's, was emotional. It's like goodbye. Yeah, that was I happy. have to I have to go to my spin-off now. <laughs> I'm leaving you. <laughs> it's time, <laughs> it's for, time me to go for me to and my Giorgio to go to our spin-off. Afterwards, members of the crew, including Spock, tell Michael they're going with her on her journey to the future. Which means the plan will not stick. The second they showed Spock going, I'm coming with you. Oh no, you're not, dude. So, no, you've you've got plans in the future that are already set in motion. Uh huh. Uh, so we'll see how this goes. Um, I'm hoping, again, that it's going to stick somehow and Discovery is in the future for season three. Then we see the crew give emotional goodbyes to their families. And like we mentioned earlier, Pike gives a heartfelt goodbye to the entire bridge crew and oh. thanks them all for everything they've ever done. And Commander Saru, I'm gonna miss the hell out of you. Now, Reno volunteers to take one for the team in handling the crystal, and she sees the very same visions that Burnham saw. Then the episode ends as Leland's fleet arrives, they're completely surrounded, and they get ready for battle. Isn't that... Cliffhanger. Isn't that the same way the last episode pretty much ended, though? Let's do Cliffhanger. this. Cliffhanger! Sure. <laughs> Finale time! <laughs> Let's go! Captain. Well, most kind. Parting is such sweet sorrow. <laughs> okay, let's jump into everything we've noticed and Easter eggs for this. Uh, yeah, I gotta go to Star Wars Celebration, but uh, you got this, right? Easter eggs? He's got this. He's got this. You've got this. You can sure. do it. Okay. Is she gone? Okay, this is actually episode one, breakdown one for the or. Let's start with the Enterprise Bridge. The redesigned bridge contains many classic elements, including the iconic 60s style bridge chairs, the lowered well from the captain's chair, the red railings, and of course, the navigation and helm station should have TOS fans feeling right at home. When it comes to the rest of the Enterprise ship, on close inspection, the gold grill in the corridors matches the original series. Also, the turbo lift has handles, and the doors are the familiar reddish orange color. Sorry, Giorgio. Orange, really? When it comes to the sound effects, the door sound effect matches TOS. Even the sound effect of the Enterprise Photon Torpedo is similar to the original series. When Pike and Saru set the discovery for auto-destruct, they place their hands on the console screen at the exact same time. This is very similar to what Picard and Riker did to set the auto-destruct for the Enterprise D in TNG episode 11001001. Set auto-destruct sequence. Does the first officer concur? Yes, set auto-destruct sequence, now. The queen? The queen? Yeah, yeah, no, no, I, I know the queen of Zahia. We share a love of engineering. The Class M planet Zahia was featured in the short trek Runaway, where Poe made her way to the Discovery as a stowaway. And she encountered Tilly with whom she bonded on the ship just before it's revealed that she is expected to become the Queen of Zahia. Will you come visit me? Zahia is so beautiful. I'm sure. She's your twin. After touching the time crystal, both Burnham and Reno have a future vision of a giant non-detonating photon torpedo poking out of the Enterprise. Now, there could be a body inside that torpedo. In Star Trek Into Darkness, Khan stuck his entire crew inside photon torpedoes. Maybe Leland winds up in one of these to get on the disco ship? Let us know who you think's in it in the comments down below. Okay guys, that's it for me over here. I'll see you all. What a Star War! All right, how'd you do? He did great, I'm sure. Anyway, come back next week for our breakdown of episode 14, the season finale of Star Trek Discovery season two. Bye. <laughs>